welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockhoff. This is your leadership development podcast where they share unique insights with the purpose of helping leaders achieve their greatest potential. You can learn more by reading their books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose, or by participating in one of their workshops. All of this and more can be found on their website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. As you're looking at training programs for the coming year, consider Gapology. We offer live or virtual classes for your team of leaders, especially those who are new to leadership. We call these emerging leaders. And our easy-to-learn methods of identifying and closing performance gaps are perfectly designed for this group. Check out our website, gapology.org, for more details. And tonight we're going to begin a series of podcasts where we discuss how these emerging leaders can best apply our methods to their new roles and really help them stand out and make a mark in their organizations. So let's go ahead and get things rolling with Mark Tinas. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Hey, Brian, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I'm excited for tonight. It's it's actually election night uh, as we're recording this, so so it's, it'll be some interesting uh, results, I'm sure, uh, that we'll be waking up to tomorrow. What a great night to talk about emerging leaders. Yes, yes. So so uh, for the audience, so Mark and I came up with this great idea. Um, you know, we had a, a really successful series earlier in the year where we talked about um, individual contributors. And how they can apply the learnings from Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose to their particular worlds and, and what they're going through in the pursuit of moving into sort of a leadership role or even excelling within the scope of their existing role. And we thought, so what about the people who are new leaders? So emerging leaders, those who perhaps they're in their first leadership role or Maybe they've uh, received some sort of um, authority where now th- they have some people working for them or reporting to them, or maybe they're leading a a project even. And we, you know, we were talking about some of the skills in uh, Gapology in particular that they can apply to quickly be recognized as an emerging leader. And uh, so the first thing, of course, that we came across was Edge. So Edge is something, uh, pages, I think it's 168, 169 in Gapology. Uh, for those of you who have the book, uh, the paperback book, uh, you know, flip back to that section there. And it talks about Edge. And and we thought we'd spend a little bit of time talking about that. So so what do you think, Mark? You know, I think it's extremely relevant. And emerging leaders are the leaders of tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. So they need to know... Um, all the different elements of gapology because it can truly affect their outcomes, the results, their leadership. And uh, Edge was this thing we found in winning leaders. It was it was their brand, and it was unusually consistent across uh, you know hundreds of people in essence. So I think we should share it. Yeah, I, I think that sounds good. Well, let me jump in then. So. As I mentioned, Brian and I had the privilege of interacting with, coaching, interviewing hundreds, literally, of winning leaders. And we measured that based upon their metrics, their performance. And that's where Gapology came from. And in that, we tried to capture, you know, the descriptors of how the winning leaders lead. How do they lead? And we came up with EDGE just by chance. And uh, those are the things we'd like to share with the emerging leaders because you can formulate your own brand using EDGE, make it your own. And uh, I think it'll really work. Yeah, I think there's so many different tangible uh, tactics, processes, tools that, that leaders can use to become a winning leader. And there's also the, a lot of the intangibles. And I think Edge um, really speaks to some of that, uh, things that might not be an innate skill that people have, but something that they really have to uh, learn and lean into uh, to really apply Edge and uh, become a, a successful winning leader. Yeah. And there isn't a lot of downside to building your brand with these things. So let's take a look at it. Well, the, the other thing that you mentioned earlier before uh, we started 
was <clears throat> it's easy sometimes in the Zoom world not to consider the importance of your brand and your leadership, how it's on display on Zoom, et cetera. So it may be more difficult in today's world to develop edge. What, what do you think about that? Oh, definitely. When you're face-to-face -face with people, you can read their body language. They can read yours. Um, so there's more to what you say beyond just the words. Um, that, you know, they'll read facial expressions and so forth. And on Zoom, I think it's important to realize that even if you have just like your little picture on the screen, um, people can read into the things that you say. So I would just advise just to be very careful with that. Um, and if you're on screen, certainly, um, you know, looking into the camera when you are addressing the group, um, you know, smiling, nodding, be, you know, being positive, just like you would face to face. I think those things are cr really critical to your personal brand. Yeah. And it's easy to get casual or forget that when you're just on camera. Yep, exactly. Um, you know, yeah. Okay. So the, uh, the first E in edge is energy. So across the board, we found the winning leaders to have an energy about them and the energy was contagious. Uh, and it, it was on display. So others around them and their team could feel it, and it, it motivated. It uh, it spreads to other people. We could we could just see that. So I think a winning leader needs to be on purpose about having an energy and being aware of it, and uh, really use it to your advantage. Because again, it brings your team along, it brings your peers along, which in today's workforce is just as critical often as the team that may report to you. And it, it, it may therefore be on display to, you know, those above you in the organization as well. So having an energy uh, can be an incredibly positive thing. And again, we're talking about a positive energy. We're talking about um, frequently smiling, interacting. Um, there's many ways to describe it, but we chose energy as the word that fit what do you think about that one, Brian? Yeah, I think this is a very important piece of this, um, especially for those leaders who may naturally be more introverted, more reserved of personality. As a leader, it really requires a certain level of energy to step up and have people pay attention to what you say, believe what you say, and follow you. Um, so if it's something that you're not naturally tied to, if, if you're not naturally a high energy type person, you really need to position your mindset accordingly when it comes to leadership. So really forcing yourself to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit, lean into the energy um, and be strategic about when you do that. I think that's really critical. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for that description. Uh, the D then was decisive. So we found that the winning leaders, and this would often have built, been built upon purpose, were not scared to make decisions. And they were making decisions in a line with purpose. When you align your decisions with purpose, it's not that difficult. So being decisive becomes easier when you have a purpose that you are aligned with. And we found that the winning leaders across the board we're trying to do the right thing, often, again, aligning with purpose, and they were able to explain decisions much easier, and it, it really brought, brought the team along. And so being decisive is not a negative. It doesn't mean you're overly opinionated. It doesn't mean you won't listen to others, but it does mean you're decisive. Yeah, I think purpose you know, it's 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 interesting that you brought up purpose um, because in, in uh, Gapology, you know, I read that section before we we started the call, and we didn't specifically point out purpose, but I wrote down in my notes that purpose is really your compass, and if you can have that as your solid direction, so you know exactly where you're going, um, being decisive actually is a lot easier. Um, it gives you a specific point of view. And it allows you to really not sway 
um, based on the political wins or the team, um, you know, in, the interactions between the team or any of that kind of stuff. It really helps you to stay focused on things that you're working toward. Um, and the other piece to this, I think, is is that your commitment to your purpose allows you to make those decisions. But then with that, the team is not going to be confused by your decisions because they know what you stand for. Yeah, I like that. The, the other thing that occurs to me is being decisive may not be on emerging leaders' list of things they need to do. Right. Maybe yeah. something that they don't see. In, in Gapology, we did a big comparison between the winning leaders and those that, that weren't winning. And one of the characteristics of the leaders that, wasn't, that were not winning was that they uh, were indecisive. Mm-hmm. They were indecisive. You don't want to be indecisive. So think of the alternative to being decisive, to being indecisive, or going along. No, they they had an opinion. Again, aligned with the right stuff. Uh, it's it's a game changer, and others others may not have it. So it may it may differentiate you more than you may think. Mm-hmm. So don't don't discount it. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh- you know, with this comes managerial courage. And and we hear that a lot, I think, um, in a theoretical sense. But being a fearless decision maker, you know, somebody who really has that courage to, you know, make decisions from a people perspective, but also from a project or, you know, process perspective, I think that that just creates a a brand, like a brand, like you said before, of somebody who is a strong leader who can make a decision and, um, you know, lead the team forward. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. So we've gone through E and D and now the G was greatness. So greatness was simply the expectation of the winning leaders. They expected it. They expected it from themselves and they expected it from their team. And uh, I think it was Jim Collins that said, good is the enemy of great. They weren't willing to settle for good. Uh, greatness uh, was was the target. And they set expectations that equaled that. And by setting expectations that are significant, it inspires people. It causes uh, people to really take actions that maybe they wouldn't have taken. So as a leader, Having greatness as your as your standard as your expectation can be a total game changer. Yeah, greatness uh, is the certainly the expectation of of these of the A players. You know, in our in our studies, they they really set that as as the the only thing that they would would expect. You know, from their teams, um, but also greatness is really what they also expect from their supervisors from the organizations they work for and from themselves. So, you know, there's, there's lots of different elements of greatness that a players just expect. They, they only see that as the only goal to shoot for. And I think by doing that, they really move their teams to take action on the elements that really do produce greatness. Yeah. And again, greatness can be inspiring. Very inspiring. Totally. Um, one of the reasons people leave organizations is because of the peer group potentially being less than productive, less than inspiring. So greatness is a key piece of the brand of winning leaders, and emerging leaders can really use that and uh, and differentiate themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting when uh, you know in our in. The book Apology, we talk about the commitment ladder, and we've talked about that on the on the podcast several times. Um, one of the things that we've discovered is that A players who are committed, who are very high up on the commitment ladder, if they're not working in an organization that aligns with their expectations of greatness, oftentimes what happens is they don't leave and they end up sliding down the, the um, commitment ladder and land somewhere around the grudgingly compliant level. And then they kind of hover there for a little bit and then either decide to leave or, or possibly move back up. But, but that's a, a big risk, I think, having leaders who do have greatness as their 
expectation for themselves and for their organization um, and not being able to achieve that by other people not exhibiting the same beliefs and behaviors. Yeah. So imagine being on a sports team where your teammates didn't really care if they won or not. Uh, and and you, you, you were there to win. Right. You were there to win the World Series or the Super Bowl or whatever it may be. That would be a very frustrating team to be on. So greatness was clearly a characteristic of the winning leaders. And as an emerging leader, you can make it your own. And again, you can bring other people along. It is inspiring. People want to people want to play for great teams. So right, yeah. If you're an emerging leader and and you really want greatness, that's really what you're shooting for. Start by by looking within your own scope of influence. Right. So what are the things that you can control? Set greatness as your objective, your expectation. And oftentimes you can influence other work groups to do the same. Yeah, exactly. So the final E is expectations and it ties right to uh, tight, right to greatness. So winning leaders keep score. They score the team. They have KPIs. They have metrics that equal the behaviors that they're looking for. And they know <clears throat> which metrics are those that achieve greatness. And so they set expectations and the team knows those expectations. And that's often one of the big differentiators here. The leaders that were not winning, their, their teams didn't know the expectations. But when you went to the teams of the winning leaders, they knew what was expected. And that's a total game changer. So uh, they had metrics that they held the team accountable to, that they measured, that they reported. And it was big. And uh, they had expectations for themselves as well. So this was a clear differentiator that really brought Edge, E-D-G-E, home and uh, really completed it. So that's why we wrote it into Gapology. We, we were uh, shocked when we saw it and that it, that it turned into a word. And Brian made this beautiful logo to represent <laughs> it. So thank, thank you, Brian. What, <laughs> sure. are your, what are your thoughts on expectations? Yeah. Um, yes. So edge. So, so one of the differentiators between goals and expectations, I think is edge. I think it's this passion, the decisiveness, the greatness, the, um, the things that you expect to happen. This actually turns goals into expectations in, in a way that's, that's not just aspirational, right? It's non-negotiable. These are things that you expect to happen. You know, clarity in expectations aligns your team, yourself, your organization, the people that you influence. It, it aligns all of that. Yeah, well, well said. It brings it home. It creates that alignment. If if we all have a common, you know, expectation, we are somewhat automatically aligned, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's how we that's how we closed out Edge, and we. We wanted to share it with emerging leaders so that you would know what we learned and hopefully you can make it uh, part of your own uh, brand and, uh, and be, you know, the winning leaders of the future. Yep. Yeah. I think emerging leaders, you know, today's young leaders, I think they often face oh, incredible challenges in the workplace and within their own careers. And I think edge is, is just one of those tools uh it's it's really a mindset that if you can align with uh it can really do a lot of great things well said yeah well i great. gotta go vote brian so okay. it's election okay. day <laughs> yeah you do that make sure you get one in well you have a, a great evening we'll talk to you later thanks mark thanks brian okay talk to you later bye bye all right that'll do it from here for more information on edge check out our book gapology it's available on amazon.com or through audible Head on over to our website, gapology.org, for more information. Everybody have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology production. Visit us at gapology.org.